Bada boom. Cheers. And welcome to another exciting hands on today. Audio Imperia have released their array. I always want to say area. <laughs> array string library was released, uh, I think, beginning of the week. And let me switch screen here so we can take a closer look. Then we have this beauty. This is the baby that has been released currently on Enterprise for $2.99. If you already own, I think, Jaeger or Nucleus, you get another piece of well, you get something off. I don't know how much it is. I think Air, um, the Audio Imperia will be in the chat later. Uh, so we can ask the question of questions. What the... What the... Discount is for owners of Nucleus and Jaeger. I think now I got it sorted. I have a little bit of twisted tongue today. Uh, I don't know why. So we better look into making some music instead of talking much. Uh, thanks to Audio Imperia for providing a giveaway copy for today's stream. So same deal as usual. What you got to do is leave a comment on this Facebook post. And at the end of the stream, we utilize a page called Random Comment Picker or commentpicker.com. Uh, you see the URL I just posted there here. And right now we have already 22 comments. I kind of think this is going to grow significantly during the course of this live stream. But at the end, one lucky guy or girl will grab a copy of uh, Nuclear, uh, not Nucleus, Area, the new strings from Audio Imperia. Neve, thanks so much for the info. Yeah, okay, so it's another hundred dollars off from the Enterprise if you own Nucleus or Jaeger. So, bada boom, Arken EPM. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. So let's jump straight in, I would say. Give me some contact here. Hello, Aria. So it's a contact player library, so you don't need the full version. It sits beautifully in the library panel. The library is close to 60 gigabytes in download size, so that's rather significant. And this is what's inside. We have uh, multi-patches, which is kind of the key switch variations. Um, we can look at that later if we need to. Uh, single patches, we have sections. One violin, uh, 16 violins, 10 violas, 6 celli, and 4 double basses. And the, let's load a patch here right away. The violins come with a... You don't need to manually create your second violin patch. They now included a nice little button here that immediately does that for you. So you can have one first and second violins, uh, though they are artificially created by transposing up and tuning down. So I guess that's the principle behind it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... What this library has is, for example, true Sardino recordings. And uh, that's the interface. Very beautiful, very sleek. Uh, everything that you need in uh, accessible right away. So, again, violins, violas, jelly, double basses. And then you have some pre-orchestrated ensembles, which is uh, Nucleus users already know that. Uh, Manchapoto templates are fantastic. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, hey, Dennis. So these are... I am not really sure if they are recorded that way or if they're created from the original recordings of the sections. Nevertheless, these are time savers, uh, giving you octave patches from violas and violins and uh, double basses and cellos. 
and we have full ensemble same deal all the articulations but with a full ensemble performance patches we will look into these in detail in a little bit uh, we have the measured tremolo for violins and shelly this is a pretty amazing patch we will look at that in a little bit as well that's an instant um rhythm generator so to say for uh, string arpeggios or string uh, ostinato and we have some sound design with a bunch of pads derived from the recording so we will look at that as well Overall, let's take a look at the interface again. So we have the violins legato. Of course, most important thing, how does it actually sound? Let's switch to keyboard view here. quickly check if uh, the output that you hear is actually unprocessed just want to make sure that you get the raw signal through the through the stream without any effects at least for now so uh, yeah I did have a VBC rack on on the on the signal but uh, just switch that off. So this is the raw signal straight out of the box. Not totally true because there is a virtual channel on on that. So if I turn, so now it's clean. You have vibrato control, you so from non vip to vip. There is a little bit of an issue which is going to be fixed in an update, which means the legato transitions on non vip are still uh, vibrato. So you hear a little bit of a bump if you transition legato with, uh, with non vibrato sustain samples. So you hear that little bump there because there's the vibrato legato transition and then it fades back to. Uh, Non vibrato. Which absolutely uh, is fine when you work with a vibrato patch. So, just something to be aware of, but they're working on it and uh, there's going to be an update in some kind of way. So basic functionality, you have dynamics expression, so CC1, CC11, uh, vibrato CC21. There is an included reverb that uh, I tend to switch off uh, if I use the library within the template, but just for the sake of trying it out. That's a room sound. So that's the internal reverb. The dry signal is like that. And the library comes with 
four mic positions, a stereo modern sound and a stereo classic sound. Right now we are listening to modern. A little bit more hyped, kind of more suitable for trailer sound. So let's check the classic mix. Uh, yeah, for the sake of demonstrating, let's use the uh, key switch patch. So there are key switch patches and individual patches, but we can use the 60 Marlins key switch patch. Good morning from my dog. So that's the key switch patch, same interface. The interface is very consistent throughout. So, and I have been at the close mic. So we can check some of the other articulations. Hey, Martin. Thanks for being an awesome patron. So Martin is one of my supporters on my Patreon. If you consider that for yourself, uh, the link is below in the video description. And I forgot to mention, by the way, there, that subscribe button. If you haven't pushed that yet, now is the best time to do so, to just be notified when new stuff is coming in. We got Tremolo. Half tone drills. It's pretty quiet, right? So let's raise that a little bit. But I think that's due to the structure of my template. I have the initial, yeah, I have it down minus five on the initial channel that's why it's a little bit quieter hope you don't worry too much about it otherwise i hope the sound is fine on your end let me know in the comments of the chat uh by the way also hello to everyone watching on twitch we are live on youtube and twitch at the same time in case you're wondering and again thanks to audio imperia for providing a free giveaway copy for today's stream so at the end of the stream we are going to use a website called commonpicker.com leave a comment on this facebook post and then you can win a giveaway of this very library actually let me bring in the interface here so we can see that better i think we can get rid of the key view for now what is the difference between Area and Nucleus? Well, first and foremost, Nucleus is a full orchestra library. So you have strings, brass, woodwinds, percussion, uh, some sound design. So that's the major difference. Area is a dedicated string library with the added perk that it comes with additional articulations and, and sounds that are not available in Nucleus. Nucleus covers the basic range pretty much, and Area is a dedicated full blown string library. That's what uh, how I would put it. So whole tone. Then we have sustained consorts. Again in VIP and non VIP.
that's the lowest dynamic on consort. So Tasto, also again from vibrato to non-vibrato. So that's Soltasto, then we have harmonics. You hear the bow sizzle on, on these. What does that sound like in the modern uh, mix? The library is centered indeed. Uh, and we would need to look into the pre-orchestrated patches, how that is behaving there. Next up, uh, Pizzicato. Kind of fast, and uh, this is where I would need to raise the uh, pre delay. I will talk about that in a little bit. It's with other, the same as with other uh, audio imperial libraries, but uh, the spiccados obviously are way more playable when you don't have to wait uh, and get a coffee between hitting the note and having the sound ringing. So obviously it sounds a little bit artificial when you get the full 250 milliseconds pre-delay. But obviously the downside is that it's not really instantly playable, so you gotta find a little in-between uh, solution. I actually was thinking about that the other day uh, also when building the Nucleus template and, and stuff like that. And I had the idea, well, we look into that in a little bit with the workflow, but um, pretty much what I would like to do in the future when I work with Audio Imperial libraries, um, when you load a patch twice, it does not take twice the RAM. So, for example, on, on my template here, I could load the violins again on the second violin patch. And I could use the full, the full 250 millisecond sample delay, uh, delay. And on this first patch, I could bring that all the way up. So pretty much I could say, my first patch is the recording patch and the second one is the playback patch. So then I would say this sits at minus 250 and this sits at zero. So instant playability. So what that does is uh, I could now go and record and have the instant playability
So let's record something and try. I try my best to play it on click. So I tried my best. <laughs> so this is now. Let's go with eighth notes. Well, as you can see, I tried my best and it still didn't work. So, and now I can hard quantize this, basically. So, and it still sits on the grid, but I could use that to, to record it. But what I could do then is move the whole thing after I'm done onto the 250 millisecond track and get the pre-delay. And that's actually a workaround that makes, for me personally, that library even more usable because um, the struggle with, uh, as much as I love cinematic studio strings, for example, but these different delays on the, uh, pre-delays on the legato, for example, like uh, 100, 250, and 330 milliseconds, uh, require a bunch of programming work after the fact to get it right. And since Audio managed to get this consistent to one value, everything is, if you put the uh, knob into that position, uh, everything is minus 250, no matter what. So I could also go ahead and record some uh, spiccato strings and have them react instantly to my playing. Let's say we take the spiccato fast. So if we just take that as a as an example. That was very bad. <laughs> Hard quantize the whole thing. I actually wanted to do uh, this. So, so that's actually even cleverer. You could record on the two hundred fifty millisecond track and monitor the zero millisecond track. That's pretty good, actually. So there is another way it could work. But what I want to do is C spiccato is A minus two. So I just need to put the corresponding key switch here. So, but these, uh, yeah, they're super tight, but they're a little bit, um, um, little bit artificial because all the uh, pre, sound before the actual transient is cut off because of the zero millisecond uh, track delay. So when I move that to the 250, Fabrice, you do not use the double amount of RAM because the string libraries only gets loaded into RAM once, even when you load the patch twice. But the RAM amount that is needed for the library is still just these uh, 0 0.83 gigabytes of RAM. So it does not get more because you load the same patch again. Although it says 1.66 here, which is strange. It shouldn't do that. That's actually strange. I never experienced that. Usually a sample does not get loaded twice. Oh, because I have two different... Yeah, I have the... Okay, there we go. So 
when I switch that back, now we have the correct setting. So because I had two different mic positions, that's why it's 1.66. So again, that is one possibility to um, work with that library even more efficient when you have a zero millisecond track to play and a 250 millisecond track to play back. That actually means, uh, for me at least, that it will be even faster to work with. And you still have a MIDI. And just listen to the difference in sound between these two. Besides the <laughs> bad chords that are played there. Uh, but you get the idea. So. I think this is a pretty cool way of handling the library in a, in a workflow environment and make it even more approachable uh, to work with it. Because sometimes I struggle with these uh, negative track delays, especially when it comes to legato lines or, or even more short notes to, to have them on the grid and, and play them properly. So, yeah, that is a way... Uh, that I would work, and that same thing applies to Jaeger and Nucleus as well. So uh, it's easy to duplicate that and not utilize more RAM. The library is 60 gigabytes download size. Uh, Laurent, yeah, I know about the classical legato with uh, Cinematic Studio strings, but um, it's not the same. Yeah, that's true. You can record with zero milliseconds. I have been doing that before. So I had a setting uh, that initialized my MIDI in the beginning to, I think, I think uh, CC18 is the, yeah, CC18 is the MIDI CC and I had it sitting at 63. So that means uh, minus 125 milliseconds. That was the initial setting. And before I record it, I just moved the CC18 fader uh, all the way to the right and then record it. But the problem is once you record accidentally that CC value, uh, then suddenly it doesn't work anymore because your track is at minus 125, but your CC may tell that it's all the way up. So the uh, track delay is zero. So it works, but there's a little bit of a of a hassle uh, if you accidentally record the CC data. So uh, that approach with two different channels is actually it's just fail safe. You don't need to put down a CC18 value for the uh, for the negative track delay. You just record with the zero, have instant response, and then you move it to the 250 or whatever setting you want to set it to, uh, and it immediately works. And you still have all the MIDI to the grid and neatly aligned which is what I care about. Anyway, Slow Spiccato is the next one in line. And let's bring the... Let's do a quick test with a, with a Dynamics see how that behaves and how dynamic the library is. I can tell you it's very dynamic. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to do nothing. There we go. So I don't really care what I'm doing here. I just want to have it all the way down. So starting at velocity one. Obviously this is now sitting on the wrong MIDI track. So It's 
pretty broad range dynamically. Let's use the Spicato Fast. That's fine. And also the release sounds different if you use the 250 milliseconds versions. It just sounds more fluid and more natural. And you have a not as aggressive spiccato. Let's actually put this on loop. That's staccato. And then we go on with uh, Makata Shorts. So there's no uh, dynamics on the Makados. The question is not if Jaeger is better than this. Uh, Jaeger, well, technically Jaeger is better because you get awesome brass and a vocal patch and sound design and hits and hybrid stuff, but you don't get a as detailed string section as Area is. So it's it's two entirely different libraries. Jaeger is a complete package to create kind of hybrid orchestral trailer music. That's the sound behind Jaeger. Araya is a full-blown dedicated string library that you can drive from very intimate, small sound to full-blown hybrid trailer-esque strings uh, that blow off your balls, pretty much. So it's not fair to compare them because they're two entirely different libraries. We have a portato. And that's a good chance to jump into the individual individual mic positions. So we have a spot mic. Let's turn off the internal reverb. Let's actually use the sustain patch for that. So this is the spot mic. Sustain, I said. Then we have the Decca. By the way, why don't we change it up a little bit in between and use some celli, for example, just to get a different sound, playing the sustains all the time. Sorry for that. So turn off the reverb. Let's go to the spot mic. So then we have the Decker once more. The white, 
mic position. And a far position. So, and when we activate all of these, I mean, obviously, then you need a good amount of RAM to run all the mic positions at once. And then you can bring down the clothes, for example, and have more of a room sound. I think it even gets better with the shorts. So when we take this fast piccato, bring that a little bit up to make it more playable. spot mic or overall get the sound a little bit closer so you have a broad choice of sound that you can create with the library especially with these four mic positions um, and you can go with just the classic mic mix I mean, it's recorded centered, but actually the cellos seem to sit a little bit to the right already. Sorry for the noise there. So there's that. Okay, we do have audio imperial in the room. So if you have any questions for the library, they can answer your questions as well. So, and then again, the uh, modern sound for more hyped trailerish. Uh, I think nine round robins on the shorts, up to 16 on the uh, repetition patch, which we will look into in a little bit. Uh, round robin. So. The Yan, the Audio Imperia, the one and only. Welcome to the chat room. There we go. Uh, one feature that I'm really happy about. So I was uh, in with Audio Imperia very early in the better stage of this library. This button was my wish because there was no Niente button. But now you can bring the library down all to zero just with the mod wheel if you activate Niente. I love that. <laughs> That is so helpful when you blend, want to blend in from zero.
Megato is also pretty agile. <laughs> Making my wishes come true. There you go, buddy. And thanks for providing a giveaway copy for today. Talking about which, uh, where are we at? Let me have a quick check. If you have not yet, leave a comment on this Facebook post here to be eligible for today's giveaway provided by Audio Imperia. Uh, we currently have 85 comments already. Holy cow. You guys are serious about wanting to get this library, huh? So. And we have currently 70 people watching live. So that is great too. Beautiful legato, Chelly. That's true. They sound awesome. Um, we had the mic positions, we had the sample start, uh, there is a great explanation on the Audio Imperial website if you want to know more about that. Uh, Yen, just to make sure the strings are recorded centered, correct? Because I had the feeling that the cellos already sound a little bit to the right. Which also translates into the fader movement here. Oh, or I mean, now I had the panner. So the solo mic, that's definitely centered. That even sounds a little bit left. Uh, the white position. That sounds more a little bit to the right. No, it doesn't. Don't listen to what I say. So the mics are definitely centered, but the mix position actually to me sounds a little bit to the right already so was that a deliberate choice on the on the mix positions to have them pre-panned does that apply to the strings as well uh, to the to the violins and to the other patches let me check where are the violins on the modern mix Okay, so the mixed positions are actually panned. Now I get it. Not as much as I would like, but they are. Uh... Let's finish the interface for now. So what we have is a, a velocity curve setting where you can adjust the velocity curve to your playing. If you need to, we have a transpose range button so you can uh, move the whole thing up and down and also move the key switch range. Are there choir patches in this library as well? Why should, why should there be choir patches in a string library? Okay, mixed positions are pre-panned. Okay, just to make it super easy. <laughs> awesome. Uh, by the way, there's polyphonic legato, uh, legato. I wasn't even talking about that. And it doesn't work. Does it only work with mod, uh, with sustain? No. So uh, there's polyphonic legato, but it does not really work. What is going on here? Am I on the wrong patch? No. So let's see, why is that not working? I mean, to be honest, I don't need polyphonic legato at all, but uh, it is there and it seems not to work. It's velocity based.
RTFM, I can only say, <laughs> if I only had known that. Okay, so it's working. It's velocity-based. Now we know. Again, I don't use polyphonic legato at all anyway. Round robin setting not available, envelope not available, but the transpose range thing is pretty cool because what you can do is actually create an artificial range for the violins. So if for whatever reason you need to have the orchestra tune the G string down to an F sharp, you can now make them do so. And you can also go higher if you need to. So that is uh, pretty handy. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, you you can go to the YouTube comments. Uh, the the Twitch comments are only visible on screen in the in the chat replay. But if you want to comment directly on YouTube, you gotta head to the YouTube page. Uh, Omatic Dream. What does the legato sound like with offset to zero? It sounds bad because that's not the way it is intended to play. But I mentioned that in the beginning, so for whoever missed that in the beginning, let me recap what I said there. So let's take the uh, violins again. Audio Imperia has that when the patch loads, it comes with 125 milliseconds negative track delay at default. Hey, Jan, back again to YouTube now. So cool thing about the... Uh, all their libraries is that this negative track delay, by the way, I got to drink something. That this negative track delay is consistent throughout all their articulations and instruments. And it's always a max of minus 250 or whatever. So all the samples are cut the same way. <laughs> is that gin? No, that was lemon lemonade. Lemon lemonade. So. The great thing is uh, at minus 250, the legato sounds uh, amazing. But it is playable as shit. So between the moment that you hit a key and the sound comes up you can actually grab a coffee so what you want to do is actually move that more close towards zero so you get an instant uh gratification when you hit the key so it's playable heavenly but it sounds shit so um and I was talking about that in the beginning of the stream. Uh, that is actually pretty clever because when you when you use the same mic position, let me do that with a modern mix, and you load a patch twice, it does not double the amount of RAM it needs. It only needs the 0 0.83 gigabytes that the whole patch uses. So what... I actually started to do in my templates and with Nucleus is to have one patch sitting at minus 250 and one patch all the way to zero to make it playable. And then I can go ahead and you see this little information here, zero milliseconds. So, and then I can play, for example, legato line on the beat. Three, four. And I can even hard quantize that. Was that eighth? I think. So 
So, sitting on the beat is fine. Uh, uh, Legato is there, but with zero millisa and the instant playability is there. But it sounds not as good as it could. So, and when you have two patches loaded at the same time, uh, the cool thing is then, then you can move the whole thing down to the 250 millisecond track. And this one is sitting at minus 250 from the get-go. And suddenly... So, uh, that's, in my opinion, a pretty great workaround to uh, being being able to immediately record stuff right away uh, with instant gratification by pressing down a key and having the sound available immediately and then just moving the stuff over onto the minus 250 track and have the great sound that you want to have out of the library. So just an idea. You can do it like that. Where's Audio Imperial Bass, by the way? Jan is a Dutch name. No, Jan is a German name. <laughs> and they are about 80 miles from here. So, uh, you're talking about Nucleus uh, and all that good stuff. I think we covered everything that is on the... Eve. You got Nucleus last week. Oh, that's why you bought the template. Thanks for getting that, by the way. And I forgot to mention, uh, there were a bunch of guys, uh, of you guys that grabbed the Nucleus template for Cubase. Thanks so much for the support there. And uh, I got some great feedback on that. Yesterday, I released a version for Logic. So if you are on Logic, there is now a Nucleus template version for Logic available as well. So... Ah, uh, ba 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 ba. So that was the idea for offset. Yeah, great idea. Thanks. I think so too. And what I wanted to do is look at a few more patches that we have. So we have the violins, we have the cellos. Uh, I think the interface is covered for now. Someone asked, what is the dynamic range? So let's quickly look at that. Let's. Quickly put down an eighth pattern with spiccatos. So that's sitting uh, pretty much not at the loudest volume, but at a loud volume. So let's put that on a circle. Actually, let's do it differently. Let's go from soft to loud and back to soft. So what the dynamic range button technically does is increasing the dynamic range between the softest dynamics and the loudest dynamics. So you can pretty much look at it like, like a little bit of a compressor. So all the way down, there is not much dynamic difference between the softest dynamics and the loudest dynamics on a patch like you can hear here like you can hear here whereas all the way up the softest dynamics are so quiet that they are barely audible so the initial setting is kind of midway 
But if you, for example, feel that the softest dynamic range is still too loud, then you just increase the dynamic range a little bit and then the softest becomes quieter. So that's what the dynamic range button is doing. Hope that helps. Next one in line would be to check. Yeah, I think we got the interface covered. So let's look at some of the additional articulations and, and instruments that we have. The first thing that we have not looked at yet is the performance patches. So let's load the violin performance patch and you got two ways to control this. So basically what this is, is um, a sustain patch with a layered staccato sample that gives you the ability to uh, play lines like this. And let me bring up the sample start here because I can't play it otherwise. So I prefer to have the control via CC, uh, the dynamic. Downside, you have no legato on this one, but this is really like... So you can play stuff like this um, with the performance patches. That's what these are for. Did you battery save? Yeah, I think so. I think I would always recommend to battery save libraries when you get them. Uh, Jan, by the way, just so you know, I think there is a little bit of a bug uh, in the graphic department. Sometimes that on and off button appears or disappears. So now it's there again. So there usually is an on off button here as well. Like, but maybe that's just on the, on the multi patches. I think on the single patches, there is a, is a button. So the So that is gone in the release version. <laughs> um yeah, performance patches are layers of uh, sustain and uh, spiccato to give you that instant attack. So sometimes that is all you need uh, in, instead of anything else. Same for the double bases. These are available as, and there we have the on and off button back. <laughs> so that's going to be fixed soon. You are on coffee number five. Cheers. Coffee number six. So it's already fixed. <laughs> yeah. Let me load the jelly again just to make sure. What the actual F? Huh? 
Why is the button there now? Well, I don't care. There is a button that you can turn it on and off. Uh, if it's not there, then go to advanced. You can definitely turn it off there. There was a question before: How is it handled with a uh, uh, with a layered patches with violins and violas? And as you can hear, they are indeed pre-panned as well. Although the interesting question would be, if we bring that up. How do these layered patches behave on the spot mic? Is that completely centered there? Of course it is. And on the wide? Those are baked together samples and they are not spread out. So... Honestly, I would use it with a pre... For the most part, I would use the either the classic mix or the modern mix anyway. So, very nice. Performance patches. Next in line, measured tremolo. So, and I have to be honest, I have not played around too much with this yet. So, mod wheel. And this one has 16 round robins and you can do So I have not fully grasped the concept behind how this is intended to work. <laughs> when you have Modwheel all the way up, you seem not to be able to change. So it looks like it worked like this. So you can, but now it's not working anymore. I don't know why that is. Oh, I think because that the lows it can go in. Re yeah, okay, understood. So if we do it like this, it would be more obvious. Now I got it. So you can paint in a few different rhythms. And you can also have them playable. Didn't we do these? Listen to the difference the sample start makes. So that works great. These are the repetition patches. 
or measure tremolo. So let's take a quick look into the sound design area. What do we have here? Lovely. And you have some sound design controls in this area here. So what I would do is move the start point a little bit further here. And I did that in my Nucleus template. Actually, that stuff is really cool to, um, to create additional sound design patches. So if you bring the attack down, do the short release. Maybe a little bit more attack. And then in the effect section, bring on some distortion. And some delay. So you can get pretty creative with the included sounds here. The only thing, Jan, uh, Audio Imperia, if you're listening, what I would love to add to these, and that would give you even more uh, possibility, is to add a mono button to, to these. So if you say, I'm going to use that sound. A mono and portamento button that would drive that even further because then you could create some crazy leads out of these. Just a little bit more uh, distortion, a little bit of compression, put the threshold down, ratio is fine, slower attack, release. A little bit much. And with, with a good distortion setting, you could also, I don't want to save. Uh, you could also go for different, yeah, first you can turn, you can turn them around. And when you bring that down, you can create pretty nice Brahms. down by 12. Let's say bring that down even more, 24.
go into advanced and activate the ADSR and roll out, bring up attack and release and blend the two patches together. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but anyway, so there's a bunch of stuff that you can do with the, with the sound design patches here. Let's put this on mod wheel and then instant low bass patch. So there's a bunch of stuff that you can do playing around with that. Which is great. Now let's uh, go back to topic sections, violins. I want to start with multi patches and I want to use the violins. Violins long. Yes. And I actually want to do it with that approach that I just mentioned. Having two patches, one with a simple start at zero, and one with a simple start at minus 25, uh, min minus 250. The modern is fine. So when I close that and magically open the expression maps, and suddenly there is no expression map for area. Well, then uh, load one. Ha, where does that come from? So now I have my array alongs and have the full control of what I want to do. And for example, could place this on sustain. So that works, but it's, there we go. And the same thing I would do for the minus 250 version. So I'll bring in the expression maps here as well. Array alongs. And if I now were to record some strings, Just hard quantizing that to quarter notes. If I put that together, now we have it on sustain. Three, four. So that works, but we are missing the pre-delay. And then after the fact of recording, I could move it to my 250 track. So that's pretty cool. It's working. So let's save that. So, and I am going to write something with it afterwards uh, in a few moments. So let me uh, recap a little bit. If you head over to this link that I am about to post in the chat, uh, Audio Imperio was kind enough to provide a free giveaway copy for uh, today's stream. So you can win a copy of that very string library that we're checking out right now. We did a deep dive into the included sounds. Uh, again, it's $2.99 enterprise, $3.99 full price. If you already own Jaeger or Nucleus from Audio Imperia, it's uh, $1.99. So it's another $100 off, which is a great deal. $1.99 for a 60 gigabyte uh, Library is pretty, pretty amazing. Hey, Tom, nice to have you around. I will not pick a winner yet, 
uh, I will do that towards the end of the stream. I will just do a short break. So where are we at? We are at 108 comments. I think that's the most we ever had on a stream. So that's cool. All the 107 who are not going to win are forced to immediately jump onto the Audio Imperial website and buy the string library right away. In case you do not win. Just so you know. So that's the deal. If you enter into the competition and you don't win, then you head over to the website and buy it immediately. Jan, we gotta negotiate my deal on that. <laughs> No, seriously, I really like the library, but we haven't done shit with it yet. We just um, showcased what's inside, but actually let's put it into working mode and uh, write a little bit with it. But for that, I'm going to jump on a short break. I give you some more uh, wonderful music from the from the demos for the library. Again, I said that in the beginning of the stream, please uh, give a big round of applause to all the amazing demo writers that did awesome stuff with the demos. So I'll be back in one or two minutes, uh, just grabbing a coffee and taking a short break. And then we're actually going to write a little bit of music with it. Hopefully, if I, uh, if inspiration strikes, but with such a, library it should not be that much of an issue so hopefully catch you in one or two minutes off okay back to topic we are going to write a little bit with this beauty i hope We have the long articulations loaded here. Actually, let's uh, fill that whole thing up a little bit. So we want the second violins long on the second violins. The waiting music is beautiful. That is true because Audio Imperia has some pretty darn great writers uh, showcasing the library. All these guys did an amazing job on that. So this is the zero and we put it again here with the minus 250. I will actually do the whole thing for the whole purpose of writing something with it. So I can immediately move it to the 250 setting. Violas long. So I would technically wouldn't even need to do the sample start here on this one. I could also do it in MIDI on the actual track, but I mean, since we're on it, let's do not worry about it. Bum, 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 bum. Quick load template quickly fills. So that is off already. Viola is long now with minus 250. So, Chelly long. Technically, I could have prepared that right away before the start of the stream. But I don't have. You miss my neighbors. Yeah, on the last stream, that was hilarious. <laughs> so much noise going on around. Uh, but thank God, uh, Sample Logic and Red Room Audio were still okay with the stream and how it went. It was fun while it lasted. So, last but not least, we have the double bases long. Put them to zero. Rip. Rip. Ba -da -ba -da. And then we have the double basses long at 250. So, and put that at 
no vibrato is fine put that at minus 250 and the cool thing is uh shameless plug here talking about the quick load template you can then save that multi as uh for example strings array and when i take the quick load uh i forgot where i saved that i think f template cubase internal contact strings array right and then i can move that here and next time i'm working in a quick load template i can just click here and load array right away all readily routed so um that's another cool thing to do there so we have the long strings now these are all on zero and these are on minus 250 so i just want to make sure that all these channels are correctly set up uh minus 250 so and last but not least i want to bring up the mixer and take the all the string patches here technically i only would need to do that for the second part but and set the sense to let's start with ah thank you quick uh, quick link minus 10. so now all the mixer channels any tips for DAWs that does uh, that don't have a negative track delay feature uh well the only workaround for that then is when you have that track that was bad So pretty much like this. So if you and your DAW do not support So if we are on the minus 250 and your DAW does not support uh, negative track delay, so you would end up with this sound. The only thing that you can do, theoretically, is to change from the, and I think every DAW does, does that, changing from the bar to the second mode, and then manually move the MIDI, and you see in, in the brackets, you see the value, uh, move it minus round about 250. So then when you go back to bars, so then you have it in time, but uh, the downside to it obviously is that your MIDI is not aligned to, so this actually should be there. So your MIDI is not really aligned to the grid anymore. Um, so if your DAW does not support my negative track delay, uh either get a new daw or move the whole thing 250 to the left either the midi or the rendered audio it doesn't really matter the cool thing is you always know if you go with the full uh pre-delay of the samples that it's always 250 milliseconds so you can't go wrong there if you move it 250 to the left you have it on the beat if you use that setting of the of the library coffee number six Yan, where are you at? So, but uh, on the other hand, Logic has a negative track delay. Uh, Qubit obviously has a negative track delay. Studio One does have it, but it sucks badly at it. So, um, you can put 
a track delay to minus 250, but it totally messes up the MIDI. So if you have a trade straight 16th line, da 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 da, and you set it to minus 250, it plays something like da 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 da. It completely messes up the MIDI information. So I hope that um, they will fix that in an update anytime soon because uh, the Nucleus template actually works with 250 completely as well. So that's why I haven't done a Studio One version yet for the Nucleus template. Um, so just, okay, thanks for the heads up. Ab Ableton Live does that as well uh, with the negative track delay. Uh, DP does that definitely. Pro Tools, I'm pretty sure. I can't imagine that Pro Tools is not capable of doing that. Uh, so Reaper, I'm not sure. I think Reaper can do that too. And as far as I am aware, Fruity Loops is the only one that actually does not have a negative track delay. So, uh, but don't count, uh, count me on that. You had zero coffees today. How are you working, Tom? How are you functioning? There's no way of functioning without coffee. So does it actually do the expression maps on all of the channels when I select Alt and Shift? No, it does not. Sometimes Cubase is weird. Some stuff works on multiple channels at the same time, and some stuff just doesn't. So, but yeah, we have the long articulations, and we now also have nice delay attached to it. A uh, nice reverb. So what I would do is go into the inserts, do a little bit of EQing, uh, meaning for the most part, getting rid of any rumble that we don't need and give a little bit of polish in the 4K area. Just a little bump there, not much. And usually I try to Bring it down a tad on the five six hundred hertz range compared to technically you could even bring down the 4k range 4k range a little bit because they are very prominent in that area and rather give a little bit of shine in the 12K range. And it depends on which mix you use. So the classic mix obviously uh, sounds less brittle And in that case, I would rather raise uh, the 4K range a bit. I think we can even bring up the reverb to minus six. There was a question which reverb I'm using, Valhalla Vintage Verb. That's my go-to. But yeah, so on the classic mix, I would need to raise the 4K a little bit, which the modern mix gives me already without putting an EQ on it. So that works. And what I would do is um, save that as...
aria violin one so that makes it easier oh forgot. damn makes it easier for later down the line so if i want to have that same patch on this channel i can just open that up and say give me the array of violin one there we go So, and I have the send at minus six. But it's hardly playable with minus 250. So what I would do is uh, let, first let's um, bring the tempo down. just an improvised line there and again we can hard quantize that whole thing actually it should be there That last one was a little bit so, but now move the whole thing to the 250 and get some instant gratification in the sound there. So that sounds great. And what I could also do is, uh, for example, record the uh, vibrato setting, so bring vibrato all the way up. Just a little bit more movement from vibrato to non-vibrato. So vibrato all the way up. That one was bad here. But yeah, at the end of a phrase to uh, turn the vibrato off or start without the vibrato and uh, bring it in gradually. You could also do like, bring it down and immediately bring it in over the course of something like this and leave it on. So these are little things that don't make a huge difference in performance, but uh, can make make it or break it to fool the listener's ear. And you could also leave vibrato all the way up and just uh, call it a day. That's possible too. So let's use the Sultasto from the Celli. or maybe consort. I need a little keyboard on the side here, which has like minus C, uh, minus C2, C minus two to B minus two, so I can get rid of these octave buttons. I mean, they help, but. But same thing here, I would tweak the sound, but it's faster now because now I can load the violin patch and adjust uh, from there for the celli. So obviously I don't want to cut it 80 for the celli. 
uh, I can keep this high sheen there. Uh, I don't want to get rid of too much of the 4K, but that four or 600 area. That is where sometimes the boxiness sits that you don't want to have. And on the celly, we can bring in a little bit of more warmth for the low end. Will you be only using Area for this composition? I have no idea what I'm going to compose, so I can't answer that question yet. Uh, I will see. That's a little bit too much on the... I want to have some more grit and also Why not use the iPad? That would be awesome, but right now that iPad is just sitting there to look nice <laughs> on the stream. <laughs> um, no, uh, technically I would actually have the iPad set up to uh, utilize that, but I did not start Touch OSC before I started QA, so uh, it does not uh, connect well right now. I want to... Put a little bit of grit onto this chili here. That would be extreme. I still want to filter out. Listen to the initial attack what this does on the, just holding down the, the uh, what's it called, the sustained node. So without and with. There's just a little oomph that it gives to the initial transient on the node. If that's too much, you can still dial it down or you can push it harder and then to do a hybrid but I actually prefer to have it all the way. Yeah, so when you when you turn it on and off, it's it's not that much of a difference, but uh, and it makes it always the small steps that add up in the end. Although there's already a quite significant difference between uh, the two settings. So I'm going to save that as um, cello. So I have that available for future use. What do we play? Oh yeah, the question was, what do we actually write today? Um, I need 
a piano. A small piano to just. No, oh, I forgot to keep one instance of contact open. Happens all the time. So then this happens. When you don't have a contact instance open, there is a bug with contact. Whenever you reopen the GUI, it re initiates the the quick load database so it takes like ages before you can actually access the quick load database the only workaround is to have one contact instance uh already open and put that aside somewhere on the screen where you don't see it so that way Whenever you open contact, another contact, it's always instantly accessible. So you just click on whatever you want to load. And then there you go. I have some strange, I have hair in my mouth. Where is that coming from? Could not be mine, I guess. Okay, let's go with the classic render as usual. Bop, bop, bop. Boop. Would be helpful if I am on the channel. Okay, pretty dry. Reverb, black hole, a little bit of delay. Not G minor again, we had that last time. Just improvising a little bit to find something that sticks. That's Robert Miles' children. <laughs> used to say writing music is 10% uh, transpiration and 90% inspiration or was it the other way around I'm not sure
Ah, yeah, something like that. Gotta get out of the mindset I'm totally on children now in my head. Mm, okay, we are talk still talking about strings, not about piano. That's nice. That's fast, and that's one ten. No, oh, one. Okay, let's try this. Start with that, just as a basic idea. Correct. On this piano, there's a Bahala vintage verb and black hole. Without the black hole, it sounds like this. Okay, let's see what we can do with it. General concept, piano does the chords. Sounds pretty nice already. Just want to make sure that this is playing legato and move the whole thing to the 250. to have the vibrato all the way up. I did. But something is wrong as well. Mod wheel, mod wheel and expression. Expression needs to go up. Volume is fine. Actually do that to Okay, so we have that. My Discord, it's linked in the video description below the YouTube video. You can find a link to my Discord. Uh, yeah, feel free to join there. Uh, stuff coming, more stuff coming there. Okay, so cellos can do... Hmm. 
Let's try that. Wakes up, grabs coffee, jumps on YouTube, and a rare live stream. You write area as well. <laughs> I made that mistake too. It's area. I struggle with that all the time. So, hard quantize because we move that to the minus 250. I should technically be uh, a little bit more consistent here and uh, name these correctly so I know these are the minus 250 and the render versions. But I like really start to dig that approach of, of playing it in with uh, zero milliseconds and then just moving into the minus 250 to get to get, uh, get the proper sound out of it. I really like that. So just want to make sure that these are all named and labeled correctly. So that is now with the 250 track delay. And another thing, we definitely need some short strings, but I'm gonna make that a little bit faster. So I am going to load the area strings. Where are they? There they are. So load that again. That should make it a little bit faster. to switch these to the short patches, short, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> short patches, sorry. So violins short, violins short, violins two short, violins two short. Again, if you tuned in later, I have these two different patches because these sit at zero millisecond track delay, so I can instantly play them. And these sit at minus 250, so I can then move what I played onto the uh, 250 millisecond track delay tracks. And it sounds gorgeous, and it's faster than me tweaking the track delay sample knob every time after the fact I recorded something or changed something. So uh, funny enough, I pretty much just only yesterday thought of that approach and I kind of start to like it and to dig it. So this is done and I can already save that multi uh, strings area short. and to make it even faster. And remember, I did not touch the uh, sample track delay, a sample start. So, but what I'm going to do now is put this to CC18, move that all the way up. That means these patches are sitting at zero track delay now. Or not. Why is that not working? Because mm. so so yeah put these on CC18, that means these are at zero. And the ones down here, when I change CC18, I'm bringing it all the way down, so that means these are sitting at 250. I'm just putting that MIDI bit there in the beginning to initialize the patches here, so that means Uh, 
why do I not hear anything? I just need a little bit of fresh air, sorry. Come on, move. There we go. Okay. I hope that is not too distracting uh, on your end. If you already mentioned this, uh, no, this is not the one instrument per track. This is my multi uh, instrument template. I mean, the thing is, Cubase works way better with multi timbre instruments than, uh, say, Logic. So uh, I still prefer to work with my multi timbral instrument approach in Cubase, but I do have the single instrument approach as well. It really depends on what I want to do. Anyway, expression maps. So let's go. Shorts. Shorts. Just want to make sure that we have the correct settings here. Shorts. I did set these up before uh, when I did my demo for the library, so that's why these are already there. So, short notes are done. Okay. And the pizzicato is on G sharp. And again, there is no setting for the shorts for the reverb. So I'm going to quickly do that. Take my shorts. Go to my reverb setting and bring that to... I had minus six on the long, so I'm going to do minus eight on the, on the shorts. That should be fine for now. Going to the shorts. So I want to have the very subtle pizzicato there. It's already enough to thanks so much for entering the discord uh, and also thanks for my awesome patrons patreon has lifted off in the past couple of days it's crazy so i really appreciate that uh, i did not record the expression map so let's set this to pizzicato and now this should sit at minus 250. It does not, because I did not do the minus 250 here. I missed that, sorry. So, last settings. I may have been faster by just duplicating the strings long. But, well, it is what it is. So. I want to add uh, harmonics from the from the violins too, and harmonics are G two. Okay, let's try this. Okay. 
Okay, and there's a bunch of stuff that I need to do afterwards. Uh, ba -ba -ba, bring that to quarters. Harmonics is fine, but I want to record CC11 on this one um, because I want to fade that. Oh, no, I need don't need to. I specifically asked Audio Imperial for that function. So, have the patches be able to uh, get the mod wheel down to Niente. Because that saves me the need to record uh, extra expression. I will compose some perfect music to sleep to. No. Oh, maybe. I mean, it's uh, it's nap time right now. So, <laughs> damn it! Oh, I put a shortcut on opening uh, my instruments. By the way, O oh, now opens, and I don't have an instance open. So this one needs to stay there. Perfect. So now it creeps in from zero, which is kind of the point. We're able to control it that much. Yes, they react to pitch bend. So bring that there. I think I deleted the expression map. No, I did not. Why does it not react? It does, but it's crazily quiet. There we go. But I still want to bring that articulation down a little bit, so I put the uh, expression down. And that intro here, ah, I changed the, yeah, I changed the violin to uh, receive, to go down to Niente. So on the violin here, I don't want that. I only wanted that on the violin too. And I still have expression if I need it. And Shelly, just want to make sure that they are all the way up. And also, these shall not go to Niente. And we don't have any violas yet, so let's see what we can do with these. So it looks like I want to have the Niente function only on the violins too, on this one. Is the expression ah, okay? So cellos are legato. That sounds rather lovely. And okay, I want to try something. I want to try like, um, hey, John. Let's take it around. 
Uh, I want to try to... Niente does indeed mean to nothing. And I just realized on the on the violas I want to have that because I want to create a little bit of a tremolo arc underneath the whole thing. And when I have Niente, I can control it with Modwe alone, which is helpful. On the last one, we can also we'll quantize on the last one. We can change that to legato and do just adding that there on top and making sure that the mod wheel here doesn't start at zero because that means it cuts off all the way. And when we now move this to the, I am on the minus 250 already. And do we have Colenio? We do have Colenio. So half of the violin two section can play. Vissim, hello. It was bad here, but I like the viola. Uh, yeah, violas coming in there. So move that to the minus 250 again. And I forgot to put down the key switch. So that was Colenio. And also expression all the way up. What is happening? Why are you doing this? Thank you. Well, the benefits of having multis on one track rather than a single instance per track. Well, first and foremost, uh, processing power. So it's a difference if I need 16 contacts overall or 150 or 160. So there is a noticeable difference in performance between these two plus uh, file size. And also I actually do like the fact that I can with one click load different multi. So with one click I can load my area multi, uh, array multi, then I can have a multi for CSS, etc. 
but this is something very Cubase spe specific because Cubase uh, appreciates working with multi timbral instruments, whereas, for example, Logic is really bad at that. So you need single instances in Logic. And Studio One is, is kind of a hybrid in between, uh, it takes both. But uh, for example, in Cubase, I can access the GUI of the instrument from every MIDI channel that is linked to the instrument, uh, which is not possible in Logic. In Logic, I would need to go back to the first channel, open the GUI and change stuff, and then go back to what I'm working on. This is such a deal breaker. But in Cubase, this is absolutely flawless. Uh, just click on whatever MIDI channel I'm working on and have everything there. Um, it's, um, yeah, Cubase allows me to do that. So multi-timbral in Cubase is awesome In other DAWs not so, and you always have the possibility to go the single instrument per articulation route. That's another thing that you can do. Downside is that uh, rendering, uh, if I were to bounce in place just this section of all of MIDI, uh, that would suck. Because, because when you render that in place, it renders all the 16 outputs from contact. So that's the downside of working with that approach. But on the other hand, I don't need to render that much because it doesn't take as much CPU and processing power. So uh, it's a back and forth. and. Uh, Usually I know beforehand what I'm going to do, what I, what I want to work on, and that determines whether I use the multi-timbral or the single instance version. Yeah, if you freeze it, uh, you if you freeze that instance, then you freeze all 16 instruments that are linked to that instance. But again, uh, I mean, I'm lucky enough to have a decent system, so I actually do not use freeze at all. So, but render in place and uh, stuff like that is obviously way easier with single instances. Is it possible to play Symphonic with a native M32? If you mean the M32 keyboard, uh, Hey, just guard, how are you doing? I think you can play symphonic stuff in with every keyboard that is out there. What is your random place or first click solo before doing so? Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Yeah, obviously you can solo and uh, then just export this uh, as audio and re-import. Um, but unless I don't need to, I, I don't want to render audio anyway. I want to keep it MIDI till the very end so I can edit and tweak and, and uh, work on it. Let's keep going. I actually want to turn down the volume of these little colenio. And another thing that I want to do, and this is also something that I like about Cubase, that you can instantly access, even when this is a MIDI channel, but you can access the audio return from that specific MIDI channel and directly change stuff in here without jumping into the mixer. Uh, so, for example, on the second violins, I want to uh, invert the stereo field so that they are sitting on the opposite side. And I just want to make sure if I actually have the second violins activated. Of course, I don't. So... These are second violins, and here as well. We need a second wave of violins. Violins? Violins. 
Excuse moi. That was a kind of silly mood today. <laughs> so, second violins are now second violins. And you hear that they're now coming from the right a little bit. I love that modern seating with uh, violins one on the left and violins two on the right. Just helps spreading the stereo field a little bit. Um, let's load the ensemble sustain patch to keep going. I want to have a single patch, full ensemble, sustained. I want to have the same thing again on the last one, but then with the CC18 applied. So I can grab this for the ensemble patch. So that gives me zero track delay. And I copy that over to this one. So that is 250. Uh, Aria is centered, but the mixed mics, uh, so the modern mix and the classic mix are pre-panned. Okay, let's just put down a chord progression. Uh, right now I'm playing with a modern mix. Hey, Oleg, thanks so much for the kind words. Really appreciate it. So I'm uh, just using that uh, ensemble patch here as a placeholder to get some ideas going uh, that may likely not end up in that track. I need to put that to minus 250. Audio Imperia release date, this library is already released. It's available on the website. It's a $2.99 intro price and $1.99 if you have Nucleus or Jaeger. You can see it. By the way, yeah, I forgot to post that link. So this is where you can 
Can I hear the ensemble in a classic mix? Of course you can. Going down all the way and putting this on classic is what this sounds like. So that's the classic mix. But then again, so I just brought the expression down here to a half. Uh, ba, ba, ba. What reverb plugins do you recommend? I love my Valhalla Vintage Verb. Can't go without it anywhere. Okay, let's see if we can do something with that. So just for the first part, and the cool thing is that we can pretty much hard quantize that. Uh, Till there's no tomorrow. Well, eighth notes, obviously. And then we can move that into our 250 delay and get a more natural sound. So that sounds. That sounds pretty awesome. I can adjust the volume a little bit more here. Uh, yes, I do turn the internal reverb off when I add um, when I add the stuff on top. Uh, black hole. I usually use the black hole preset, but then dial the mix knob all the way to hundred percent. I just want to make sure that CC11 is all the way up. Okay, it is. Yes, black hole is even tight. that whole thing, that whole ordeal once more. And make sure that there is no jump. We can actually move that into the second violins an octave higher. But make that very quiet. Make sure that it's saving.
Um, so since we're changing to G on the last chord there. Okay. What chord am I actually on here? Let's keep going with that. So let's keep the F. Is the stream quiet? If so, I apologize. I did turn off my master uh, section. And to be honest, if I look at it, the voiceover is cool, but I think the audio is indeed pretty quiet. So let me let me tweak that a little bit. Uh, bring that up and bring good old L three to give a little bit of a bump in volume. So that should be fine. Hopefully that helps. So you should have a little bit more signal now. What the hell? What happened? There was some sustained information that should not have been there. Again, remember that these uh, strings here are uh, just a placeholder for me to... I don't know if they end up finally in the track. I just want to do a quick turnaround here. So, in terms of chords... That was nice. Can I? Oh yeah, it saves that, but it was not in time. What did I play? that quite a lot so let's solo this
So, uh, yeah, retrospective record. I could not survive without it. Actually, it's all eighth notes. Yeah, that one comes here. Uh, let's see how that sounds together. All in all. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, now you see why I actually think that these um, ensemble strings are already way too big sounding. So I bring the way down, it's really just a guideline. I think we don't even need the ensemble patch. So let me just do a little bit stuff here. Wrong patch. Okay, let's try this. missing the chord in the end here. Nice piano. This is Native Instruments, The Grandeur. Okay, on the cellos, we switch to to the sustain patch so we can do um yeah let's do this
that was pretty nice. And I need to move the Chelly to this place. No. Ah, damn it. That was the... So let's see. This is the strings on their own. Something's very messed up here. So, I'm going to F directly, I think helps better here. Please go there. Quarter notes for the celli. No, I don't think that the legato is bad. I do like the legato pretty much. Does Cinematic Studio Strings has a better legato? Yes, I'm with you on that. The Cinematic Strings legato is even better. But this one has a different sound and there's no portamento, so that's a downside. But I do like uh, the legato as well, especially with the minus 250 second setting. <laughs> What is sleep? I have no idea what you're talking about. That's nice. Well, it wasn't too shabby. Let's move that to the minus 250. But I do like that melody on top there. to do this and I want to have the saving done and this here and come in a little bit louder just Move 
remove that there. That's a pretty nice sound. I like that. I do like that. Very much. So, by the way, since we're on it, last call for entries for our giveaway today. Thanks to Audio Imperia uh, for providing a free uh, copy of Araya Strings. Uh, if you want to grab it for free today, leave a comment on this Facebook post that I just linked in the chat. Let's take a quick look where we are at with entries. I think that is one of the most requested. 132. Holy moly. Uh, I think that's the biggest number of entries we ever had on a giveaway. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So. The violas so let's copy this i have an idea for the line there That's the point where the cellos should simply shut up. Um, okay, I forgot that this part Ah, oh, sorry, I just gotta listen to that on its own. See what it sounds like. Where are my violins too? For the legato, I used the minus 250 millisecond legato.
actually I don't need that last node and we can bring that down a little bit. And on the last line, I saw here a choir on top there. So I definitely want to bring in some, some vocals. Uh, let's, uh, since they are here, let's go with these. Let's make that a quick job. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. What was the line there on the... And this cello obviously needs to needs to go down here to be in the minus two hundred fifty millisecond range. So from here on, we actually change that to sustain. How does that sound in Consordino? I think I like sustain better. Okay. So Okay. I mean, that could be tweaked a little bit. A little bit much. Ah, uh, not hard corn dice. Theoretically, I think we could even turn off the piano here on this one and just leave the strings stand on their own. What does that sound like? So, I mean, this is really going into more uh, uh, a classic direction. So let me do something and change the whole tone to the classic mix on these. So and see what that sounds like. Not with a hyped modern sound, but with a, a classic mix. Let's see what that sounds like. Because I think that kind of track can benefit a little bit 
from changing the sound there. And uh, obviously on these as well. Otherwise, suddenly we have the uh, hyped shorts and and quieter longs. So we definitely need to change that as well to the classic mix. And later down the line, I think I would even save me two different presets, one mo modern, one classic. So, yeah, San Diego is nice, but that bridge to that island gave me heart attacks. I'll never go there again. <laughs> I died that day. And that means since we are quieter now on the on the strings. Yeah, exactly. That that bridge that goes over the water there, that friggin' high bridge. I died a little inside when I drove across that bridge. So let's bring the pre to zero. So what I did, I uh, increased the pre gain to zero on this one. And then on the insert on the master, I can just raise the volume a little more. So this is now the classic strings mix only and uh, just a little bit quieter in the end. Hey, Argentina, don't cry for me. But on the other hand, we could keep the piano in there just to give it a little bit of uh, a framework. We do not always say hi and where we come from, but if you do, I appreciate it because I always like to know where you guys are from. Classic should have been, well, I mean, you could easily resave the classic mix as the, as the default. Um... It really depends on what you want to write. I actually, honestly, I prefer the modern mix a little bit more. But it definitely sounds nice as well. What I would do actually on the master here is um, before the before the L3, it's a classic case of slamming L3 on that and calling it a day. Mastered. It's mastered. Um, so I would actually put a, a either a pull text style EQ. Uh, but what's even better is the... Uh, what's it called? <sighs> Come on, it can't be that hard. Clarifonic. Where do I have that? Kush. Kush Audio did the one. So, Clarifonic on the master is just sonic. Instant sonic gold. It just gives you that sparkle 
but you gotta be very, very careful how much of it you use. Wow, listen at that disturbance, this difference. This thing is amazing. I feel like we should do a kind of um, in the end. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, that is a lovely, lovely string sound. And I'm actually pri uh, quite happy that I did not go the trailery big sounding route with this one, but rather with some quite intimate and lovely sound. Um, I do like that. It sounds different. It just showcases that uh, Area is capable of much more than just uh, balls to the wall in your face strings. So, lovely tune. I like that. Save it. Uh, I think that's it. Anything else to do on this stream? Let me know what you guys uh, think of the library in the comments, uh, if you like it, if you grabbed it. Again, it's on Enterprise for $299, uh, $199 if you own Nucleus or Jaeger already, but if that is the case, you should have gotten an email meanwhile anyway, uh, letting you know about the fact. I think it's a lovely, lovely library. Uh, sounds great. And... Not much else to do, right? Give away anyone? <laughs> okay, let's switch back. Switch back to here. Uh, we want to make this proper. Random comment picker for the win. You go here. No, you go here. So. Uh, We are at, oh wow, 147. That is really the, uh, really the most uh, entries we ever had. And remember, duplicate users are filtered, so no one has a chance because, uh, has a better chance of commenting 10 times or whatever. So, Let's play this lovely little tune in the background. And hit the button, shall we? Are you guys ready? One lucky winner. And look what the... <laughs> funny enough, look what the commercial on the website shows me. Jan, how did you do that? That's sorcery. Bring that master down a little bit. It does sound really nice. I like that cue that we just wrote today. Come on, let's go. Three, two, one. Who's going to win? Audio Imperius Area. And we have Johan Lindgren. Congratulations very much. You are the winner and I will get you in touch with Audio Imperia right away after the stream. Hope you enjoy the library. And what can I say? Congratulations. Congratulations to Jan for such a beautiful, beautiful library. It sounds really, really good. And uh, you can do great stuff with it. All I can say is thanks for tuning in today. 
that was a fun stream. That was great to have so many of you guys around. Congrats to Johan for winning the library. And um, all I can say is see you next time. Again, if you own Nucleus, uh, I've just released two templates for Cubase and uh, Logic that you can utilize with Audio Imperius Nucleus if you are not so much into template building and stuff like that. Uh, check it out. Links are all below the video. But for now, head over to the Audio Imperial website and grab this string library, especially if your name is not Johan. Head over right there, right now, click on that buy button and get this library. It's really, really good. So, thanks a lot, everyone. See you next time. Catch you later. Bye-bye.